Thanks everyone for joining. My name is Jonah Cowell and uh, appreciate everyone joining us today. A little bit of legalese because I am going to be talking about some roadmap. I will tell you short term and longer term and where we're going as I step through the content. But I uh, really come from, as Faraz said this morning, I used to be in your seat. I was running IT operations. I've worked uh, across a lot of large enterprises, startups as well. And then I shifted gears into research at Gartner. And now I'm working for AppDynamics as a vendor. Um, so it's been an interesting perspective throughout the journey of frustration, advice, and trying to fix things. Um, but yeah, it's been great. And um, I just wanted to sort of start out by talking about how important it is for us to transform. And I know you've heard a lot about it. But as a former analyst, I do like to, to really back it with numbers and research. These are uh, some numbers that IDC says that really show us how it's important to transform because of uh, business reasons in order to run our businesses more efficiently. And clearly, there's, there's a lot of trends here. Uh, more importantly, we can understand our outcomes. So a lot of this uh, discussion today about data-driven decision-making results in predictive outcomes. And that's the reason why we're all trying to digitize and instrument everything. But more importantly, as professionals in infrastructure and operations, uh, Gartner predicts that we're going through a big change as a team. So in the past, we had really built a lot of infrastructure and managed components. And now we really have to move to the era of managing transactions. And the, this is not an app dynamics thing. Gartner clearly says that as IT operations, we need to move closer to the business. We need to understand the user interactions with our business. And moving this way is, is essentially going to result in success for us. And the reason why this has changed, when we kind of look at the history of infrastructure and operations, you know, roughly a decade or more ago, we used to kind of be craftsmen. We were creating infrastructure, building unique applications. And then uh, around this time, and even just a few years ago, uh, even in my discussions with customers today, automation, creating repeatable things, scaling out our applications and our environments, that's the mode that we're in. But really, we're, we're now moving towards the era of being business aligned even more so. And so technologies like APM and the data that we can capture help bridge this divide as we move into the next era, essentially. And so I did want to talk a little bit about market disruption and some of the things that we're doing. Um, AppDynamics is obviously an APM company. The underpinning of all the cool things that you see us do with data are because we're good at APM and we focus at that uh, you know, as a company. But at the same time, we, our second iteration or the second set of products we built around business IQ is that we saw the need to tie the business with the application more closely. So three or four years ago, we built what is now called Business IQ. In the next phase of this, where we see the company going in general, and especially with the backing of Cisco, is really moving towards this concept of the central nervous system for the enterprise. How do I interconnect and see everything that's happening? So our vision is really, how do we move through this next stage of what's next for business IQ, what's next for APM. So we really see you know, what AppDynamics does well today is visibility. We provide all of the data and insights, the agents, the metric capture, the correlation to build the underpinnings of making the right types of decisions. On top of that, and I'll talk a lot about some of our new upcoming analytics, our new upcoming root cause analysis and baselining and other machine learning, but we really see that building insight from these, this data is what we've done. So business IQ is part of that. What we do with our APM technologies are part of that. But beyond that, the net result of that is you have to do something. And so the idea here is that you have to take action. And this doesn't mean that AppDynamics or Cisco is going to become an automation company or an ITSM company or a DevOps you know, automation type company, continuous release, continuous deployment. But we want to integrate and build the right things uh, in order to facilitate this vision. 
So this is really what, what, where we see things going as a company, is that you need to take action on these insights. And our goal is to make that as easy as possible and to acquire and build the right technologies uh, to fill certain gaps in that vision. So overall, the, the priorities that we see uh, for the digital enterprise are really efficiency, uh, value, and visibility. And I've kind of broken our roadmap up, where we're going, what we're doing, into these three broader categories. So the first one is about efficiency. So all of us are somewhere on this curve in the DevOps transformation, the maturity life cycle. But moving from the siloed teams that we have or had yesterday and some of us have today or have in, in large swaths of our organization is that we're moving towards a more cross-functional organization in order to facilitate the agility that is DevOps. And so as we try to release faster, build faster, make incremental changes, we have to transform our organizations, we have to transform our people, and obviously we have to transform our tools as well. But the challenge is, is that today in almost every enterprise is that you have centralized and decentralized teams. And all of us are somewhere in the decision-making process of which teams should be centralized and which teams should be decentralized. And when you start thinking about microservices or breaking these monolithic applications into small pieces, you have to decide which pieces of that architecture can be centralized and reused, in which we should allow the teams to make their own decisions, innovate on the tools and the methodologies that they're using. And you know, what we see in, in leading organizations, and even if you look at the FANG companies, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Netflix, is that they have a lot of centralized services. Um, Gartner refers to these as like an outer architecture, or the pieces that maybe surround the application code itself. And the idea is that if I create some centralized uh, capabilities in my organization, I can get consistency. If I standardize on my API gateway, I have a centralized place to control and manage information application access. Um, in the case of monitoring, or what's called telemetry in this Gartner diagram, um, it's important to have the same type of data across the entire organization so that we can uh, facilitate broader decision making. So as you transform as an organization, it's important to think about where you want to centralize and where uh, decentralization makes a lot of sense. The whole use of this microservices term is a bit misleading too. Um, most of the enterprises that I speak to say they're building microservices, but when you start to break it down, they're actually building something that's in between uh, a, a macro or monolithic application and a microservice. So Gartner uses this term called mini services. I think it's an okay term. The main thing to think about here when you're going from a monolithic application, as you can see on the right, to a totally decoupled application on the left is are you willing to make the sacrifices that you need to get the outcome that you want? So on the bottom here, the goals of breaking apart my applications is agility. I want to release my application components independently. The challenge that you run into is with the data architecture. If you want to decouple your applications, but the data is all in a big monolithic database, repository, could be in a mainframe. There's a lot of challenges associated with breaking that apart. If you do need microservices, the goal of that is scale. You need to, you need to break apart your data stores. This is something that's very hard to do. Going from a federated data store to a, a distributed data store is very difficult. And most organizations, when I start asking about whether they're breaking apart their data stores, the answer is no. We're just building APIs around them. We're trying to fence them off, create the right kind of access to information. And that's really called a mini service because it's, the goals are not scalability. The goals are agility. So just wanted to share that. But the use of containers is, is prevalent in mini services or in microservices. So as AppDynamics, we've spent a lot of time 
really bringing better visibility into orchestrated environments so that you can better understand what's happening in your applications. So we've created uh, improved versions of our Docker visibility that gives you context of where these applications are running. And this is actually already available in our product today, but was relatively recently released. And similarly, those that are running containers typically are running something like Kubernetes. So I guess a show of hands, I'm gonna ask a few questions through the next few slides just to gauge where you are in your journey. Um, how many of you are orchestrating containers? Just to show of hands. Yeah, so it's about 20-ish people or so. So definitely like seeing more adoption in, in orchestration in general. And so we've built a lot of capabilities in AppDynamics to absorb information from the orchestration platform. We've really focused on Kubernetes, but I'll also talk about some of the other orchestrated platforms that we support. And the idea is that we tag uh, all of the metrics and components in AppDynamics based on the way that you've defined your pods and your different components in Kubernetes. So it really helps you uh, get that additional context when you're running you know, a scale out type environment. And we also pull tags in from things like AWS as well, and we bring that in. I know many of the customers that I spoke to today are on their cloud journey, somewhere in between looking at cloud services. Uh, AWS is a great partner of ours. We've been working closely with them to facilitate uh, sales and deployment of AppDynamics in AWS, and we wanted to make sure to support um, you know, additional visibility of where that application component is running. And similarly, we see a lot of uptake in things like Lambda. On the slide, I know it says beta in summer. The beta's actually been running for quite a while, and we are nearing a release on this. So you'll see um, some pretty interesting things coming from that. We actually grab telemetry from Kinesis coming off of Lambda, so it gives us some really interesting data um, that we can pull and correlate. And we can also correlate the EUM, the front end, through Lambda and other application components, so it's pretty useful. How many of you are doing serverless Lambda type stuff? So there we're at about four, so roughly 18% of those running containers. Um, sounds about right. So I did want to move on to uh, a big topic, of course. Most enterprises are multi-cloud. Clearly, data centers are still important. They're not going anywhere. But we're building public and also private cloud environments. My next question, as I pull up the next slide for you, is, is how many of you are running uh, some type of private cloud platform, uh, like an OpenShift or Pivotal Cloud Foundry. It's actually probably, yeah, it's about the same as the container people. And the interesting thing is that OpenShift is actually built on Kubernetes and Docker. Uh, we've built a lot of additional capabilities to absorb data from uh, OpenShift. You'll see some recent blog posts just in the last week or two how we're capturing additional metrics off of both um, Cloud Foundry and OpenShift. This has been a big push for us. We're working a lot more closely with the product teams at both Pivotal and Red Hat on building additional data capture from the infrastructure layer. So you'll see us continue to build this out and um, in creating more capabilities to deploy app dynamics out of the box. The idea here, of course, is as your developers push new code, App Dynamics is already instrumented um, and it comes out of the box. So it makes things much easier in terms of getting your deployment up to speed and giving developers uh, the ability to push code when they want to. So some of the other things that we do is we also uh, will tag additional metric data. Um, so the idea is that as you push things through your continuous deployment or continuous integration system, uh, all of the right visibility is tagged into this. So we have a lot of customers now packaging applications in Docker containers throughout CI and CD, and we can automatically have uh, you know, metrics being tagged uh, accordingly. So it really creates additional context it lets you do release comparison a lot more easily in the product. 
And so this is something that many are looking forward to in our uh, very soon upcoming release of the product. So the next pillar I wanted to talk about is value. And an interesting piece of data from the survey that we did with IDC last year around cloud migrations is that in order to have a successful cloud migration, we really have to understand the business outcomes and the business metrics associated with it. If I'm going to move from on-premises to the cloud, I want to make sure that the business outcomes that I'm expecting are being delivered in that migration. Obviously, performance is also critical. Um, I had a meeting earlier today with a customer that migrated from on-premises to cloud. They were very concerned about performance, but they actually found that their cloud-deployed uh, applications were much faster than their on-premises applications. So this is counterintuitive. Most of us think, well, I don't know how I'm going to ensure performance in the cloud. I don't really have control over it. It's someone else's data center. But in reality, a lot of times these cloud services are architected in a much more performant manner than our on-premises data centers that maybe have some, let's say, interesting architecture decisions we made in the past. So um, it is important to really understand the business metrics. So one of the things that a lot of folks are very excited about, you heard about this earlier, is this concept of business outcomes. And these business journeys and, and ultimately business outcomes, we're now starting to treat these more like a business transaction. So today we can look at where things are falling out in a business journey, but now we're gonna automatically start collecting other metrics, looking at end-to-end -end measurements, starting to really treat these like a BT, Sorry, that's our shorthand for business transaction. Um, and really understanding what's happening and where the pain points are in that transaction, similar to what we do in an individual business transaction. And so we're making this a lot easier. We're creating a lot of out-of-the-box visibility um, if you use this feature. Uh, it is relatively new, but some great new enhancements coming in the short term. And one of the things that App Dynamics has always been known for and was actually the first APM product to support this is asynchronous transaction tracking. As we move to microservices, a single request coming from the browser often fans out into dozens of requests in the back end. And how do you reconstruct this transaction technically is very difficult because you have different threads that are spawning different requests and then you have to reassemble all of that data. So when we first built asynchronous transaction tracking, it was really innovative. But today, what we expect out of transaction tracking is a much more granular view as you deploy microservices applications. So we've created new visualizations and actually a whole new system for tracking asynchronous transactions. Uh, this is something that you may not actually see in the product so much, but you will see it when you start drilling down into solving complex problems. So this has been a really big undertaking by our development team to really rebuild and rethink the way that we do this. Um, and this is coming in the short term, so it's a, it's a big effort that was undertaken. And then similarly, when App Dynamics built end user experience monitoring, single page applications were relatively new. Today, every application is, is single page, or at least most of them are. And so we've actually built a whole new way of defining and tracking single page applications. Instead of tying us to a particular framework, we've created an open way that we can work with any single page application framework. Um, this is actually already released um, relatively, not too long ago, a couple months ago and we've gotten great feedback from the field as they've implemented this at customers. So it just makes it much easier to understand what's happening in these applications where it's a bit opaque in terms of how the application controller is sending the request to the right pages. Um, so this is another you know, big piece. Similarly, we've seen a lot of uptake in, in real user monitoring, and so we've built new ways of analyzing the aggregated data so this just gives you a bit more visibility into what's happening um, in certain ways that we can aggregate and analyze the data. So this is, uh, is definitely an easier way to slice and dice and 
look at different segments of your user population and then aggregate metrics. Um, so this is a pretty powerful new feature that's uh, coming very soon. And then similarly, we actually uh, made an acquisition before Cisco acquired us to really go much deeper into mobile application performance monitoring. I don't know about you, but when I use mobile applications, I don't so much run into crashes and errors, but just hangs where the application stops responding. It's really frustrating. You have to kill it off, run it again, go back to what you were doing. We've uh, acquired some really interesting technology that lets us go deep into understanding why an application is hanging and the type of criteria that make applications hang. So this is really helpful in terms of those supporting mobile applications because users are often complaining about hangs and not hard crashes per se. Um, so this is uh, definitely a great innovation. So moving into our machine learning, AppDynamics uh, was really founded on baselining technology that we built 10 years ago, um, which at the time was very cutting edge. But in the last decade, the world is caught up. People are starting to build baselines. Lots of your other products now do that. So we're really taking this to the next level. And what this is, is this is a new type of machine learning that's based on a few different uh, regression models, including multivariate analysis. And it really gives us the ability to make predictive recommendations to you with scoring based on the complex topology and app dynamics. So obviously the business transaction is the key uh, pillar that we use to describe what a user is doing. And we can now take that, all of the metrics associated with the business transaction and provide re a real time view of not only when a problem is occurring, but what led up to that problem occurring. So you'll notice um, that what we do is we show the timeline of the issue. We provide some recommendations of you know, what we think the problem is. We give some scoring here. And we also allow you to drill deeper. So instead of just saying, this is what we think, we're going to actually tell you why we think that. So what type of baselining are we looking at across which metrics? How is the relevancy of this recommendation come up? So we don't just want to say, this is it. We want to tell you why, and then let you do your own analysis as well. So this is something that's going to uh, become front and center of the product. Um, this is entering uh, beta in the next short term for sure, and then we'll be releasing that. Initially, the beta is going to be on our SaaS environment because we can do machine learning across all of that data. And then ultimately, you know, we'll see how we deliver it. Um, but certainly, this provides a new level of baselining, correlation, and understanding how a problem progresses up to an outage or a major issue that you see. So we're pretty excited about that one. I did want to talk a little bit about visibility and uh, also talk about how we're working with Cisco uh, to provide that better visibility and context. To give you an idea, uh, there's obviously different uh, users involved in looking at application performance and network performance. And those of you that are using our network visibility, which I'll talk about in a few minutes as well, you know, we really see two different use cases around integrating app dynamics and Cisco technology together. I would say the first one is about how we can facilitate faster and better root cause. Obviously, we all blame the network or the load balancer. And instead of just doing that, how about getting some data sharing back and forth and providing context into that? The second one, which is our bigger picture vision, I'm not going to talk a lot about this because it's not finished yet, so to speak, um, is really how do we look at your business transactions, look at your application, and prioritize traffic on the network. So the way that we're able to do both of these things is with a Cisco technology called ACI. And ACI enables uh, an application level control across the entire network. So instead of looking at a, let's say, opening a particular firewall to allow systems to communicate, instead we can set broad-based policies that get applied across the entire network. So it makes it easier for you to define these, and it also provides a lot of additional visibility 
from the network device into the applications that are running. So what we're able to do is, is really provide context within network visibility and app dynamics of what's happening in ACI. So we have several beta customers that have been using this. Uh, we're getting close to making this generally available and we've been showing it a lot. And it's really providing that native visibility and app dynamics so that those of you that are running applications or infrastructure and operations can see a bit about what's happening on the network beyond what we do in network visibility. And then the second piece here is really how we facilitate visibility for the network team that's using ACI to see what's happening inside app dynamics. So this really creates additional context. There's a application that users of ACI can download that lets you see what's happening on the network in terms of the app dynamics applications running. So it really gives you some additional pieces and, and deeper view if you're using ACI to see what's happening there. So the main goals of what we're really trying to do is, is creating mapping between the different models that exist in ACI that the network team builds and the application model and app dynamics and how we can bring that together. And the main goals here are really faster mean time to identify and triage and solve problems. So this is the short-term goal of what we're delivering with the integration with ACI. And longer term, you know, we really see the network as, as becoming aware of applications and business transactions, and ultimately your most important users and prioritizing those. So there's been some exciting stuff that we're doing that I think is gonna make a big difference for network teams and getting us to all get along better. So uh, if you are using network visibility in our next release, you're going to see some additional context being brought forward. So what you're looking at in this screenshot here is the ability to look at network metrics as it relates to a particular snapshot. So we do some of this today, but we're taking it to the next level where we can really relate the data back together. So that when we see a, a snapshot that's running slowly, we can isolate it much more easily if it is a network issue that we're detecting with network visibility. So this is uh, definitely a, a welcome innovation and makes troubleshooting much faster. Um, some of the other things that we've built is the ability to uh, better instrument hybrid mobile applications. So most applications today use a mixture of a native container and a web page that's rendered inside the mobile application. These are many of the common frameworks. Um, we've made it so that now the uh, web page version of the mobile app will run EUM, and the container will run our mobile EUM, and we can correlate that together. So you can actually look at what's happening on the native side and the web side together. Um, so we support these uh, frameworks with that new capability. And it's definitely a, a welcome upgrade for those using our, our mobile EUM. Uh, so this is coming very soon as well. And then I did want to also talk about some of the great new agents um, that, that we've come out with recently. Some of the things that have been made generally available relatively recently, and I'll talk a bit more about a couple of these. We do have App Dynamics for SAP, our new ABAP agent that lets you see what's happening inside SAP. If any of you want more information about this, feel free to catch up with me at Drinks. It's a product that I built and that I own, so near and dear to my heart. And then uh, another one that I also built with the help of IBM that I'll talk about in a moment is our ZAPM Connect to see inside ZOS subsystems. Um, so I will talk a bit more about that. We also have .NET Core for Windows that's generally available today, so those of you deploying .NET Core. And we actually very soon will have .NET Core on Linux as well. Um, that's very close to shipping in our next major release. We've also been hard at work uh, supporting IIB, which is IBM's integration bus. It's kind of the next gen of their MQ. So we have an agent that looks at that. Um, it's definitely a very challenging environment because the user can really construct custom workflows for the information to flow through, and it's built on a combination of C and Java and is, is quite complex. The other piece that I'm also working on is our new Ruby agent. So those of you that are customers that are interested 
in testing out our Ruby beta. We do have that uh, coming up very soon, and uh, we have several customers testing it with us, so uh, more than happy to take more of you on if you have Ruby applications that you're interested in monitoring. So when it comes to really looking at the, the ZOS subsystems, we've worked closely with IBM to build this technology. There's no other external APM vendor that IBM works with. Clearly, there's a lot of synergy between app dynamics and those of you in financial services, and obviously a lot of mainframe. So we've recently launched our initial support for IMS subsystems. We support Kix, MQ, and DB2. And we have a uh, aggressive roadmap. IBM is actually here at the conference. We have the uh, product manager and the lead architect for this solution at the conference. So more than happy to have those discussions with you to understand your requirements and show you what this, what this product can do. Um, similarly, on the SAP side, it's a, a very complex application footprint. We've built the ability and we're the only APM provider that can actually look down into the ABOP code executing inside SAP. So we're able to trace those transactions all the way from the front end, your mobile or your web applications, into SAP subsystems, whether you're using ERP or CRM. Um, so this is a new offering from AppDynamics. It's about two months old. Lots of customers interested in this. And those of you that are interested, love to talk to you about your requirements and, and your challenges. So uh, before I open things up to questions, I did want to explain that AppDynamics is focused on the enterprise. That's why we're part of Cisco. With the uh, cash that Cisco has repatriated, the investment that they're putting in AppDynamics, uh, we're definitely here to stay. We're your partner. AppDynamics, since I've been at the company for three and a half years, has grown from 400 people to 2,000 people. So we're definitely investing. We're growing a lot. And you know, I believe that it's really important, obviously, the projects that I run to support not only these new fancy uh, cloud-based, containerized applications, but the legacy systems that underpin them that aren't going anywhere. It's, it's important for our businesses because we're not going to replace everything. We're not going to re-architect everything. But balancing that new and old is the key to being an enterprise partner. And we know that it's important to do both things. Uh, it is a big challenge, but we try to do our best to support both. And obviously, analytics, as I explained with our new machine learning and the move to the cloud, the work we do with Amazon, and, and obviously expanding our SaaS footprint to a global worldwide footprint. We now have points of presence in Frankfurt, in the US, and in Sydney. So anyone that has data privacy concerns or anything like that, you know, we're continuing to invest in that to make sure that we're your partner. Thanks for your attention and coming to the conference and appreciate your business for those that are customers. Thanks. Thanks, Jonah.